Okay, so you may have been taught that dx by dy is equal to 1 over dy by dx, at least informally speaking. And what this tells you is if you've got y as some function of x, y is f of x, then if you want to find the derivative of the inverse function, dx by dy, this is basically just the same as finding the reciprocal of the derivative of your original function, dy dx, at some sort of corresponding point. And what we're going to be interested in is, does a similar sort of result hold for second derivatives? But before we go on to second derivatives, what we'll do is we'll just have a look at this a little bit more rigorously in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's imagine we've got some sort of nice differentiable invertible function f mapping from x to y. We'll define its inverse to be g mapping back from y into x, where here are capital X and capital Y. These are just some nice suitable subsets of the reals. Okay, so since g is the inverse of f, we can always write g of f of x is equal to x, and this is for all x in our set x. Okay, and then to prove this result, we can just differentiate both sides here. So using the chain rule, differentiating the left-hand side, we get f dash of x multiplied by g dash of f of x. This is just equal to 1. And then if we rearrange to make g dash f of x, because we're interested in g dash, if we make this the subject, we get g dash f of x is equal to 1 over f dash of x. Okay, so this doesn't really look like what we had in Leibniz notation, but let's introduce for our generic point x, let's introduce a generic point y equal to f of x. Then we can replace this g dash f of x with g dash of y. Then this is equal to 1 over f dash of x. Then hopefully this is looking slightly more familiar. So g is just a function of y, so g is basically x. So then we can call this dx by dy on the left hand side, then on the right hand side we know that f dash x is equal to dy dx. So now we've seen that this reciprocal rule does work, at least when dy dx isn't equal to zero so that your inverse function is differentiable. And now we're going to look at doing the same sort of thing for a second derivative. So if we start off with this identity g of f of x is equal to x for all x, differentiate both sides once. To get the second derivatives, we differentiate both sides again. So using the product rule here, we'll get an f dash dash x multiplied by g dash f of x. And then plus, when we differentiate this function, we get another f dash x. So you get f dash x squared multiplied by g dash dash of f of x. And now this is just equal to zero if we differentiate the one there. So now we're interested in g dash dash f of x. So we'll rearrange to make this the subject. We get the second derivative of g at this point, f of x. This is now equal to minus f dash dash x multiplied by g dash f of x, then all divided by f dash x squared. So here we've got g dash of f of x, and we can actually simplify this a little bit because we can just use the previous rule here. So g dash f of x, we know that this is just equal to 1 over f dash of x. And what we can do as well is we can take our f of x here and we'll just write this as equal to y, our generic point y once again. So what we get in the end is g dash dash of y is equal to, now we get minus f dash dash x and then divided by f dash x cubed. And this doesn't really simplify any further but what we can also do is we'll just put this back into the Leibniz notation, we'll compare to what we thought it might have been. So we get d2x by dy squared, this is now equal to minus d2y by dx squared, and then this all divided by dy dx cubed. So we do get a nice formula for d2x by dy squared in terms of our y function, it's just not quite what we were expecting with this reciprocal. And if you're interested, there are some functions you'd be able to find where this reciprocal rule does hold, but it doesn't hold in general. If you wanted to find these functions, basically, because you know d2x by dy squared is equal to this, if you wanted it to also be equal to the reciprocal, you just set 1 over d2y by dx squared equal to minus d2y by dx squared divided by dy dx all cubed, and then solve this as a differential equation, if you like.